Why we burn it? Because with the climate change now, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. <laughs> we need to burn more and look at our country. And that's why we burn this now, some around June, July. Bit of rain now, winter rain, it'll come back to life again. You're only getting rid of the old stuff, and, you got the, and you're going to get some new stuff come back. At the moment it's unbalanced in terms of that you're putting too much you know, CO, uh, CO2 in the atmosphere when you get wildfires, wrong time of burning and things like that. Uh, whereas, you know, if you have it all in sync in terms of timing with you know, different seasons and you know, based upon indigenous burning and stuff like that, then it's balanced and at the moment it's unbalanced. Well, I think that it hasn't, been, it hasn't been thought out properly. It's been poorly done. Because today now people seem to chuck the lighter in, saying, no, we'll burn the grass. But they don't understand that there's sensitivity in there in regards to the sustainability of the actual habitat or, you know, area that people have been hunting through there. People, they like coming around here lighting fire, so we do it ourselves so we get rid of it while it's early of the year, while the rain's coming, so start renew fresh grass. All our bush tucker, what we eat up this end, like yams and fruits and berries and all that. And we save, once we save them, well, we're right. If we don't save them, beat the tourists or people what lives here, they are firebugs too themselves. If we don't beat them, well, we got nothing to eat. Like Bush the devastation we see from wildfires is thousands of kilometres being burned, uncontrolled burning. My travels all over Cape York in the last 12 months, there has been bad fire management. With climate change and we as Indigenous owners, we need to adapt a traditional burning method and it has to be done from a traditional method point of view and done correctly. As you can see, this is um, an example of a, a cool burn here. All this area still got the grass, you know, green grass behind us. You still have the, you know, foliage of the leaves and the place is really cool. And especially for the habitats around you, you need the, you need the animals to have shady, like, you know, like especially wallabies and all that, you know, like bandicoots all around here. Yeah? cockatoos, especially with the climate change getting hotter, you know, you need, you need to really um, be careful how you burn, you know. As you can see, we come to a different location here. This is a, a, an example of a bad burn. You can see the foliage on top there. It's all been decimated. Now the sun can come directly on the ground now. So we shouldn't be making this happen. The reason why of um, like with the climate change, it's gonna, because you've got, you know, really, really long dry season, and it's gonna really um, affect undergrowth, and also the heat just come directly on top of them, you know? So that's really bad. I've seen um, trees being destroyed, um, not only through fire, but through colonization, uh, taking trees that we use for, um, ourselves as well but we try to do our best as we can to to make sure those um, those trees that we um, share 
in a relationship of um, carbon monoxide and um, the environment as well, that we share a, a very strong relationship. We actually select areas that we think would need burning you know, uh, every year or some that needs to be burned every couple of years. Um, and, and we, we make sure that a lot of our burning is done, protection burns, conservation burns, you know, different types of mosaic burns are done by the end of August. So there's no late season hot fires coming through the place and just killing everything, you know. You know what the old people told me, they done it for hunting, they, they done it um, to bring more animals around um, and to a benefit for them for the, the trees and, and more seed and a lot of their fruit trees as well, bush tucker. But getting back, getting the people back on country so they can look after it, they can tend to it, take care of it, that's what it's all about. Yeah, we used to like walk along here. All the way through here we walk along with my mum and dad and we just pull up, make a fire anyway. Yeah? Nowadays we can't burn too much of this. And the Minyagada used to come and eat. They sleep under the tuku. Under the tree they come and have a rest. With the old people used to burn the grass used to come back and grow real good so the animals would come back and eat it. But now you can't have any more grass to see and then they wallabies won't come back because no grass. The food all gone because we can't burn anymore, you know. Uh, that's why the kangaroos are gone, the climate kangaroo, there's nothing left for them to come back and live on that because we can't burn anymore on country. You can see on the hill there, that's the rainforest canopy being burnt. The brown stuff there on top of the hill, there's green stuff and there's patches of the brown there. That's the canopy of that hill got burnt. And you can see that it's bald headed now. Some of them patches are happening. It's been just been yeah, hidden away, sort of ruining the, the top part of the area. So you can see someone has just been burning here, aerial burning, and they just chuck it anyway. And this is what the result of it is. And we want to sort of stop them kind of, you know, people just think they can come and burn without, you know, managing, managing it properly. So yeah, these are the things that I want to we want to concentrate on properly. You know, with, with knowledge and stuff like that, it's, you know, it's mostly towards Western uh, thinking and te uh, teaching and learning. For any training or teaching or, uh, uh, or learning should come from our ancestors, for indigenous people. Same as if you look at the pastoralists and all that, in the pioneer days and stuff, they would have learned and was trained by our ancestors. The training has to come from uh, an overall uh, you know, curriculum of, you know, in terms of uh, the education that comes from uh, the old pioneer and our ancestors side uh, to today so that we can you know, carry it on into the future by training our younger generations into the future.
well, you've got five core units mm -hmm. and whatever else you need to yep. do for that fits into your job. Yes, yeah. And scope of works, mm -hmm. you just pick out those. Good to see a lot, a lot of people starting to come and do the course and, and get interested in that, you know. My clubs and trees there, all them leaves there, every one of them leaves one to every one of them trees here, they got oil. If you turn the world inside out, that's my universe. That's where Indigenous people's universe, all over the world. Not an Indigenous people, non Indigenous people do. Our sons are the core. So far we have had six fire workshop here in Cape York and from that we have learned that it is a very useful tool, not only to our Indigenous communities but the wider community of Australia. We need to start working with traditional owners and people on the ground to raise the awareness, training and ed education about traditional fire methods and it is very important that we work together on this one as one.